This module deals with uh, the clinical anatomy of the ulnar nerve and we are going to discuss about uh, the ulnar tunnel syndrome in detail. And these are the objectives of the module. The ulnar tunnel syndrome is a compressive neuropathy which is mainly caused by the direct compression of the ulnar nerve in the Guyon scanol. And it is also called as handle bar palsy. So, before we discuss about uh, the details of uh, the clinical characteristics of the ulnar tunnel syndrome, let us talk about uh, the Guyon scanol. If you see the Guyon scanol, the canal extends from the proximal extent of transverse carpal ligament to the aponeurotic arch of the hypothenar muscles. So, the canal is approximately 4 cm long and uh, it has a contents of ulnar nerve as well as ulnar artery and it has the following boundaries. So the roof is formed by, this is the roof, the roof is formed by the volar carpal ligament and this is the floor. The floor is formed by the transverse carpal ligament and uh, the hypothenar muscles as well as the flexor retinaculum like that it has the radial border as well as the ulnar border. So if we talk about uh, the ulnar border, it is formed by the pisiform and uh, the pisohamate ligament and also the abductor digiti minimi belly. And next is the radial border. The radial border is mainly formed by the hook of hamate. All these are the boundaries of the Guyon scanol. So now let us talk about uh, the classification of the injury in the Guyon scanol. Depending upon the clinical presentation, the ulnar nerve injury in the Guyon scanol or uh, ulnar uh, tunnel has been divided totally into three zones. One is zone 1. As you can see in this picture, in the zone 1, the injury is exactly at the proximal to the bifurcation of the nerve, right? That is what you are seeing in this picture. So it is exactly at proximal to the bifurcation of the nerve. So because of proximal to the bifurcation of the nerve, because of the zone 1 injury, both the deep branch as well as sensory branches are involved in the injury, which in turn causes motor as well as sensory loss. So one important point at last is zone 1 causes motor and sensory loss because the injury is proximal to the bifurcation of the nerve. And the next one is zone 2. Zone 2 means only there is uh, damage to the motor branch which means the deep branch of the ulnar nerve is involved. That is the reason we already know that the deep branch is mainly motor and the superficial branch is sensory. Because of the injury to the motor branch, there are no sensory symptoms. Only motor branch is involved in the injury. So what happens is uh, the all the muscles which are supplied by the motor branch are paralyzed. This is what is called as zone 2 injury. Next is the zone 3. In the zone 3 injury, only sensory branch is involved, which means the superficial branch is involved. So which in turn causes only sensory symptoms, motor symptoms are spared. Like this, the ulnar nerve injury in the Guyon canal has classified totally into three zones. Now, what are the causes of compression is very, very important question. There are so many causes for the compression, lipoma, repetitive trauma, it may be because of ulnar nerve thrombosis or aneurysm, so maybe the fracture of the hook of the hamate, like that there are so many causes, but remember that one of the most common cause in 80% of the cases, the ulnar tunnel syndrome is mainly due to the formation of the ganglionic cyst. So ganglionic cyst formation is the most common cause of the Guyon scanol neuropathy and other causes are lipoma, repetitive trauma, ulnar artery thrombosis or aneurysm mainly causes uh, injury to the sensory branches or the deep branches so which in turn causes zone 1 or zone 2 type of injury. There may be a fracture of the hook of the ham it mainly causes injury to the deep branch of the ulnar nerve. It may be a dislocation of the pisiform bone because we already studied that the ulnar border of the Guyon scanol is formed by the pisiform bone as well as the pisohamate ligament. That is the reason the dislocation of the pisiform bone may also causes uh, 
injury to the nerve in the canal as well as the inflammatory arthritis and uh, maybe other causes if you see idiopathic in nature. So all these are the causes of uh, ulnar uh, tunnel syndrome. Now what are the signs and symptoms? Mainly because of the involvement of the nerve, pain and paresthesia in the medial one end of digits because it is mainly innervating the medial one end of digits, there is a reason. Pain and paresthesia in the medial one end of digits, mainly because of the deep branch as well as ulnar nerve is innervating all the intrinsic muscles of the hand. Weakness of the intrinsic muscles of the hand along with uh, ring and small finger digital flexion is uh, compromised. There might be a weakness of the thumb adduction. It is mainly because of uh, innervation by the deep branch. Because of this what happens is weakness in the grasp, weakness in the pinch. All these are the classical characteristic features of the ulnar nerve palsy mainly in the Guyon's canal. Now, there are various signs as well as tests to assess this ulnar nerve neuropathy. In that the first one is the froment's sign. What is the froment sign? When the patient grasps a piece of paper between the thumb and index fingers of both hands and the examiner pulls the paper, the thumb with ulnar palsy flexes at the interphalangeal joints while the uninjured thumb will not flex or only minimally it will flex. The absence of the adductor pollicis power removes one of the metaphalangeal joint flexion, interphalangeal joint extension forces. So the flexor pollicis longus power becomes more dominant, right? So this is what is the froment sign. Next is the Gianni's sign. So it is similar to that of froment sign. But if you see the Gianni's sign, which is also seen in response to pinch forces, instead of isolated thumb interphalangeal flexion, the interphalangeal flexion is accompanied mainly by the metaphalangeal joint hyperextension. Okay. The next is the Wartenberg sign. Persistent small finger abduction and extension during attempted abduction secondary to the weak third palmar introsius and a small finger lumbrical is called as Wartenberg sign. And next. One important point what you need to know is the difference between ulnar tunnel syndrome and the cubital tunnel syndrome. Mainly in the ulnar tunnel syndrome and the cubital tunnel syndrome the main differences if you see less clawing is seen in the ulnar tunnel syndrome and sensory deficits to the dorsum of the hand and motor deficits to ulnar innervated extrinsic muscles and there is a positive tineal sign and a positive elbow flexion test are the important differences between these two. And what are the investigations for the Guyon's tunnel neuropathy? The nerve conduction tests are uh, mainly done for the investigations and about the treatment we have non-operative as well as operative treatments. The non-operative treatment are nothing but called as the medical treatment. It includes uh, the administration of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, activity modification and splinting is necessary in approximately more than 50% of the cases. So these are the non-operative management of uh, ulnar tunnel neuropathy. And what about uh, the operative procedures? Mainly in the severe conditions where the medical treatment fails, operative procedures comes into the picture. The procedures which are like local decompression, tendon transverse, carpal tunnel release, all these are the procedures which are available in the surgical management. If the patient is diagnosed with the carpal tunnel syndrome and the ulnar tunnel syndrome, then mainly you will perform the carpal tunnel release. So this is what you need to know about uh, the treatment uh, in surgical management of uh, ulnar tunnel neuropathy.